Language is somehow built into the brain. It should be possible to explore how it's processed. Today, we can actually watch the brain at work as it deals with the basic building blocks of language, words. I think it's important to understand the process of language, which I think is inherently interesting in understanding how the brain works. It's, it's one of the things that characterizes us as humans. And I think to understand that leads us a long ways to understanding how the brain works in a more general sense. Are you comfortable in the chair the way you are now? Pretty much. Rachel's team uses a PET scanner to examine the brain areas involved with language. A little bit less. Harmless amounts of radioactive material are given intravenously to Patty Crippen, a volunteer. The brain areas that are activated when she uses words will absorb the radioactivity. Daddy, this will be fairly warm going on. Okay. The thing that had to be developed was an experiment that, that simplified the whole process. This will help to hold your head still. And in our particular sure case, we decided to look at the processing of a single word. But it wasn't just as simple as that either, because obviously you could say, well, we'll just present you a word and you either look at it or repeat it. But this brings into play many different parts of the brain as you process that. So it was not only simplifying the task, but learning how to break even that simple task up into its component parts. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put you in the machine. Okay. When we do a PET study to look at language performance, we do this in stages. How's that? We begin by just a control scan where you're just looking at a blank screen and see nothing. We consider that kind of the step one. Okay, Patty, we're about ready to start. Okay. Next, Patty reads words silently off the screen. The word should start in just a second. Okay. When one reads a word, one can envision a number of things being involved here. Uh, first off, you're, you look at the word, and so you activate very clearly. You activate areas of the brain processing the visual image of the word. When you look at a pet image, you, of course, you see it on a computer screen. And uh, what you see then is this rather colorful uh, image uh, which represents a horizontal uh, slice of the brain. And it's as if you're looking down on the brain from the top so that uh, the nose is, is up around 12 o'clock and the two ears are to the side and the left's your left and the right's your right. Now the image produced when Patty first looked at the blank screen is subtracted from the one produced when she read the words to herself. The result pinpoints areas that were active only when she was reading. The most active brain areas were processing visual information, specifically the words Patty saw. Visual words. Patty? Uh-huh. Okay, that was very good. What we're going to do next is the simpler task where you just repeat the words out loud. Okay. Okay, open your eyes now and begin. Bad. Fan. Real. Rifle, clock. We've now taken it up a step in complexity. Now you're using the vocal apparatus, you're repeating the words, and you immediately activate areas of the brain that are concerned with the movement of the mouth and the movement of the tongue. So you get very hot areas on both sides, roughly in the middle of the hemispheres. These are areas that operate Patty's vocal apparatus. And that becomes the control for the final step in which you're shown the word and you're asked to produce another word. Okay, Patty, if you open your eyes now, you'll see that words are going by on the screen, and they're all nouns. And what we want you to do is generate a verb that's appropriate to the noun or a use for the object. So if cake came up, we'd like you to say eat, or if gun came up, we'd like you to say shoot, something like that, all right? Okay. Okay, go, Patty. Bake, fly. Twirl, climb, heat, watch, listen, hit, swim, drink, drive, blow, ride, knit, ring, turn, sit, shoot, sniff. These final images show the areas involved as Patty races to find a verb. The frontal areas in the left hemisphere, crucial for language. Areas devoted to motor control as she fine-tunes her voice and areas often activated during stress. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. We'll have you out in a minute. That was great. Okay, good. Is that uh, long enough for you? Oh, this is fine. 
I don't think anybody's generated so many verbs in a run before. Oh, I talk a lot. Language function yeah, seems to be more than just a question of moving your mouth and sticking your tongue out and making a sound from your throat because in the studies that we've performed in which those processes have been if you will subtracted away we're still left with areas of the brain that are intensely active during this processing just of a symbol a single word and so that the brain is very concerned in a very discreet way with the processing of language so it's clear that many different brain areas must collaborate to produce even a single word. 